Yes, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Walinho channel and welcome to yet another Chelsea news video. The big topic of the day today is obviously Enzo Maresca's first press conference as the new Chelsea manager. Reese James's first press conference as the first player to talk from this new and rejuvenated squad for this season. I mean, Jesus Christ, we have like a under 23 team basically. And we're just going to unpack all the details from this press conference. Uh, kind of go through all the questions that these guys were asked. And then assess their responses to them and see, do we kind of have the same mentality as what's going on inside the club as to what the fans think is really going on outside the club based on the news, the rumors that we've all been hearing from all these journalists? It's going to be interesting to assess that. I wrote down all the questions that these guys were asked and we're just going to go over them and kind of talk about them as, as a big community of Chelsea fans. So if that excites you, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to get uploaded whenever I upload a new video to get notified, sorry. And yeah, hit that like button if you enjoy the video at the end. And if you didn't like the video, comment down below why you didn't like it. I always am open to improving the videos with any criticism from you guys. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into this press conference uh, kind of briefing because there's a lot of stuff to go over and some pretty shocking comments as well. So obviously Enzo Maresca and Reese James were 15 minutes late to their first ever press conference of the season. It's not something unusual with Chelsea managers in the past. Thomas Tuchel was late to his first press conference. So was, I believe, Maurizio Sarri and Antonio Conte and Mauricio Pochettino. So it's not too surprising. Hopefully, this is a positive because Thomas Tuchel did very well for the club and so did Antonio Conte. And hopefully, it's kind of like a good luck charm that the manager turned up late because that might mean we have a good season. But hey, as Chelsea fans, we're just looking to find anything to give us an inkling of hope for this year. But yeah, that was the first kind of funny start of this press conference. Obviously, for you guys, if you live in the UK, this press conference started at, as I just spit all over the camera, it started at 2.15 a.m., which is pretty freaking early. But now you know the struggle that us American and international Chelsea fans go through and the leaps and bounds and hoops that we have to jump through in order to watch content of the team that we love. So it's it's pretty crazy the lengths that we go through but i love chelsea and i'm honestly willing to do a lot of things to be kept in the loop on everything that's going on in this club but without further ado let's talk about enzo maresca's press conference so the first question he was asked he was asked about the enzo fernandez situation and this was pretty expected honestly this was the big news that was surrounding chelsea at the moment in this past week that and the Trevor Chalaban news as well of him being left out of the preseason squad. But the Enzo Fernandez question was asked and he was basically asked, what's going on with the Enzo Fernandez situation? And Maresca responded by saying, the situation's already cleared and clarified and there's nothing to add. Uh, he thinks it's not too big of a deal. He was asked about, will there be any difficulties reintegrating Enzo into the squad? And he simply said, no. Because these guys are human beings, they're not bad people, and he doesn't think there's a problem at all. So, good to see that this kind of being swept to one side and dealt with internally. It's not being made a huge deal by the new manager. He's not overstepping his boundaries with these players that he just met. And he's kind of stepping his authority and saying, listen guys, this is not as big as a deal as it's being made out to be by the press. It's a simple mistake. Handle it inside the dressing room. And let's move on from it and build as a team together because that's the only way we're going to succeed for this season. So fair enough, Tenzo Maresca. Good response there. And I applaud that response 100%. Now, he was asked about what does the international fans mean to him, especially the fans in the U.S.? Are they important uh, for a manager to be able to connect with? And he said it's important to have a connection with fans everywhere. And he was also asked about his philosophy in terms of what he's looking to implement into this new Chelsea squad that he's a part of. And he said his philosophy is quite clear. It's to dominate the game and keep the ball as much as we can. He also said to try to be aggressive both on and off the ball. Listen, he didn't go too in-depth about inverting this guy and then moving this guy into this position. He kind of kept it nice and simple. And to be honest, almost all managers in the world these days want to keep the ball, want to dominate possession, want to be aggressive both on and off the ball as well and want to dominate the game so pretty vague answer there by Enzo Maresca but he's not going to give away his tactics in a press conference obviously now Enzo, Enzo Fernandez is expected to be back on July 29th which is now six days from now so it'll be interesting to see what goes on when he is reintegrated into the squad will there be any fights behind the scenes in the locker room 
where there still be a divide between the French players and Enzo Fernandez and his friends like Marco Correa and Nicholas Jackson. Um, we'll see. We'll see. It'll definitely be interesting to hear all the news that goes on in those days, though. Now, a big question that Enzo Maresco was asked about was, will Reese James be the captain for this season? And his answer might surprise you because Enzo Maresca said, for sure, Reese James will be one of the captains. Like players, who, he likes players who take responsibility and behave like leaders and captains. So he says for sure Reese James is one of the captains, but he definitely did not say that he's the clear cut captain for this season. And the statement that he made after that by saying that he likes players who take responsibility and behave like leaders and captains is pretty logical uh, and coincides with what he said about Reese James being one of the captains. Because if we're being honest, over the past season, Reese James did not really behave like a captain because he didn't really take responsibility when it mattered. And he didn't really behave like a leader because he did get two stupid red cards last season, which caused him to be a detriment to the team. By not being freaking available, he's basically one of the best right backs in the world. And because of his own stupidity and decision making, Chelsea were at a detriment in the right back position. Now, if it weren't for Malagusto, we would have been in deep, deep trouble, man. And I I understand Enzo Maresca's thinking. Listen, he's not saying he's going to strip Reese James of the captaincy. But he is saying that he considers him as one of the options to be captain. But he's not solid as the captain guy. And this makes me beg the question... Who the hell could be the captain for Chelsea if it's not going to be Reese James? Could it be Ben Chilwell? I mean, he's always injured. Connor Gallagher, we haven't surprisingly heard any questions about him towards Enzo Maresca, so we don't know what's going on about him. Enzo Fernandez, would it be the correct move to do right now with all the drama that's surrounding his name? It would be a big statement by Enzo Maresca to make Fernandez his captain. Uh, the only other players I could think of are maybe Raheem Sterling, Cole Palmer. But they kind of seem like more shy, reserved guys who just lead by example, such as Reese James as well. So, I mean, Jesus, is Robert Sanchez going to be our captain? That would just be utterly embarrassing. So that leaves us with Levi Colwell as one of the options. Seems like a guy that's not very vocal either. Tosin Arabioyo, I genuinely could see as being one of the captains. Because from the film that we've been seeing in preseason uh, of the training, he seems like a very vocal guy that is full of leadership and his his opening remarks when signing for the club left some positive uh left a positive impact in my eyes in terms of the type of character that this guy is and because he said he's looking to be a leader he's going to be one of the senior figures in the squad and he's looking to come in and show what he's capable of so i think Tosin Arabioyo could be our captain for this upcoming season for Chelsea even though it's going to be his first time with the squad so We'll wait and see what goes on there. Christopher and Kunku, another option as well, but it'll it'll be interesting. Imagine Dewsbury Hall becomes our captain. That'd be freaking crazy. There'd be outrage over that. But yeah, interesting remark by Enzo Maresca, but pretty pretty understandable why he's made this remark. Now, the big question of the day, he was asked, why is Trevor Chalaba not in the squad? Is he for sale? And Enzo Maresca is lying right to our faces he's lying right to our faces but understandably so if you were being given a five-year contract at a massive club like chelsea and being paid substantial money in this contract you would do and oblige by the owner's demands and the owner's demands are clear trevo chalaba will not play for enzo maresca this season because he will be sold for pure profit in this summer transfer window and there's nothing anyone can do about it so he was clearly told by the owners to uh, continue this fake narrative that trevo chalaba isn't good enough to be a part of the center backs to be considered for the squad and he essentially said that it's sad to leave players out we have tosin Axel, Wesley Fofana, Achimpong, who could play there as well. He said it's a sad decision, but he's here to take decisions. I'm here to take decisions. That's what Enzo Maresca said. Uh, obviously, anyone in their right mind knows that Trevor Chalaba is a much better center back than Axel Di Sassi. Is he better than Wesley Fofana at the moment? Yes, because he hasn't been out with an ACL injury for one year. Is he better than Benoit Barishil? Yes, 100%. Is he better than Tosin Adarabioyo? I don't know. I haven't seen enough of Adarabioyo, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. 
But he's definitely, from the players that we've seen from past seasons, the best center back we have available. So the fact that Enzo Maresk is continuing this narrative just goes to show that he's a yes man to the owners. He was told that Trevor Chalaba will not be an option for him this season and to go ahead and plan his squad without him because he's going to be sold this summer. So it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. We're going to have to move on from it. There's nothing we could do about it. I am very upset by this. Uh, I understand that Enzo Maresca is not going to be willing to put his job on the, on the line in his first press conference by saying, oh, yes, I actually did want Trevor Chalaba because I think he's a quality player, but the owners told me to say this about him. He's obviously not going to say that. Anyone in their right mind would never say that, especially in their first freaking press conference. But I do think Enzo Maresca is the guy is a guy that likes Chalaba. I, I genuinely do believe that, and I'm so gutted for Trevor Chalaba. It's honestly such a shame the way he's being treated by his boyhood club that he's been at since nine years old. And it's it's really sad, honestly, because out of any player in Chelsea's squad, he's the one that deserves this treatment the least. But it's um, it's very unfortunate, but it's the harsh reality now. So moving on. Uh, in terms of what he's tried in inverting players, because he was asked about what has... What has Chelsea been doing in this preseason in terms of his tactics? What has he implemented? Is he inverting midfield players into midfield, the fullback into midfield? Is it the right-handed fullback or the left or the left-sided fullback? Is it uh, Reese James, Marco Gurella, Renato Vega, Malo Gusto? Who is going to be the guy that inverts into midfield? So surprisingly, he answered this question and he says. He feels that Reese James Wigan loan, where he did play in midfield for Wigan, and I think was the young player of the season in the championship that year, he says that loan went very well and kind of proved to him that Reese James is capable of inverting into midfield and doing a very good job there. He also says that Gusto was really impressive whenever he inverted in training, and he acknowledges that Marco Correa did a fantastic job inverting for Pochettino into midfield last season, and he also acknowledged that Renato Vega could do that job as well. So he's not giving any secrets away of who's going to invert. He's kind of saying it as it is that there are many options of players that could invert and he could definitely adjust his system tactically to suit these different options of players. So it's it's very nice to see that he doesn't have his eyes set on one player and he might be able to kind of adjust based on a game to game basis based on what the tactical needs are demanding of the squad from that game. So pretty freaking good remarks by Enzo Maresca there. Now, in terms of uh, he was being asked where can we expect Chelsea FC or when can we expect Chelsea to win trophies and compete? And Enzo Mariska says, hopefully as soon as possible, the expectation at Chelsea is to win trophies or at least challenge for titles. So a little more reserved than the words that Mario Pochettino was saying. He was saying that it's a failure to not win trophies at Chelsea because it's in the DNA at the club. Obviously, Enzo Maresca understands that this club is ridiculously young. There's very little experienced players that have played in Champions League, won Champions League, won Premier Leagues in this club. And he understands that it's going to take a freaking while for us to get back right to the very top level if we ever do. But he's kind of buying himself some time. He knows he has a five-year contract. He knows that this squad is definitely not the finished article in terms of development. So it's understandable that he says this. Now... A question that I wasn't really expecting, but I'm glad they asked this, is what role does Maresca see for Christopher Nkunku in the squad? Because everyone knows that Christopher Nkunku is such a versatile player that could play in multiple attacking positions, and we know Enzo Maresca is a fan of players that could play multiple positions. So this is what he had to say about this question. Enzo Maresca said, Nkunku could play everywhere. He's already adapting very well to his system. He says he can play in multiple positions, and Enzo Maresca also believes that uh, the way to improve players is by making them play multiple positions. He wants players to be flexible and to be able to play out of their comfort zone. And he believes that moving a player 5 to 10 meters inside or 5 to 10 meters outside shouldn't be that much of a big deal because it's basically the same function in the game. A player will be the same player regardless of what position they're in. It's just about making little tactical tweaks and giving them some tips on how to perform better in that position or how to give them a little advantage, where to position themselves, how to position their body. That's the key in moving players into different positions. But he thinks there's a lot of players in this squad that have the technical ability to be able to be deployed in multiple roles. So it's very interesting the kind of um, the kind of footballing uh, idea that Enzo Maresca has, really similar to Pep Guardiola, obviously. We've seen 
this multiple position thing with the likes of Josko Vardiol, with the likes of, of John Stones, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden, obviously. And yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see the different combinations that Enzo will will cook up for us this season in terms of the lineup. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that in this preseason. And yeah, that kind of does it for Enzo Maresca's first press conference. We're also going to discuss Reese James's uh, questions that he was asked and his responses to that. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think about Enzo Maresca's answers to the questions he was asked. I don't think he said anything outrageous. It's pretty straightforward. He's a straightforward guy. And yeah, I'm not mad at this press conference by Maresco. He said what had to be said. Now, in terms of Reese James, he was first asked, how are you feeling? So he said he's in a good place and excited for the season to start. He's going to have a longer preseason due to the stupid four-game ban that he has to serve because of his dumb red card against Brighton, obviously. He was also asked, how is he adjusting to the new system under Enzo Maresca? He said, it's a lot to adjust to, just like with any new manager, but he's excited to get started and can't wait. Pretty cookie-cutter answers here by Reese James. I mean, you just see the expression on his face there. Reese James is not the most passionate guy when it comes to talking. Uh, he just plays football, and that's about it. Not really big on social media. Doesn't really say anything in the press. He just strikes me as that kind of guy that is just happy to play football. Now... He was asked about the Enzo Fernandez situation and how the dressing room will react to that. And what he said here kind of makes me think that Enzo Maresca's thinking of not making him captain right away is the correct decision because this is what he said. He said it's a difficult situation, but Enzo took ability, accountability and apologized. And he also was asked, will you have to do some work as the team captain for this Enzo Fernandez situation? And what Reese James said is, he hasn't arrived yet, Enzo Fernandez, but I hope that when he does, everyone can be on the same page and move forward from that situation. So this isn't really talking like a proper captain. He's kind of just hoping that the situation blows over and it's all resolved by then. But as you, as the team captain, it's kind of his responsibility to hash out these issues and deal with them in the moment and kind of put everyone in their place and make them understand that at Chelsea, this is not going to happen ever again. And that at Chelsea, we're here to compete and win trophies. And that's the number one priority, not any drama outside of that. So if you have any drama, settle it right now because we're not leaving and we're not training till this drama is settled. So that's what Reese James could have said. And that... He just doesn't strike me as a proper captain. He strikes me as a guy who performs very well and is very consistent. That's probably why he was given that captaincy. But honestly, I would much rather have a guy like Connor Gallagher be the team captain. Maybe a guy like Tosin Arabiolo, like I mentioned earlier. Just a guy that genuinely knows how to lead people. Uh, Trevor Chalaba would have been perfect, but obviously not in the plans anymore. But yeah, that's what Rich James had to say about the Enzo Fernandez situation. Let me know. Do you agree with what he said? What should he have said something else as the team captain? Now, has he been told by Enzo Maresca that he is the team captain for this season? This is what Reese James said. He said, no, he hasn't been told directly anything. I don't think there's a need to change the captaincy, but that's not his decision to make. Pretty interesting remarks by Reese James. Obviously, he feels that he deserves to be the captain. And Enzo Maresca, without saying it blatantly, kind of thinks otherwise. So... It'll be interesting to see who will captain the side in these preseason games. I do reckon it'll be multiple players. But yeah, interesting. Interesting stuff right there. Now, Enzo Fernandez, this was asked again to Reese James. And he said, has he spoken to Enzo Fernandez since the situation? Reese James says yes, but that conversation stays in-house. Fair enough. Fair enough, Reese. Now, he was also asked, how frustrating was last season for Reese James? uh personally and how much does he want to make up for that this year and reese james said the last 16 months were very tough due to suspensions and injuries but i'm very excited to start playing again and find rhythm again uh he's also trying to reduce mistakes that can put the team at risk such as the the match bans and the red cards and he's definitely one to push the boundaries which is why these things happened uh obviously those those bans cost us severely because not having your captain on the pitch definitely does make a difference in uh in the squad morale most definitely and if you have your captain doing these outrageous personal decisions on the pitch multiple times in a season it kind of makes you question is this the guy that should be leading us so 
Uh, once again, I just don't think Reese James is that guy to be our captain. Hopefully, he proves me wrong. But in terms of his demeanor and his actions, I don't think he's been that guy to be our captain yet. It, this is why we should have kept our experienced players, Jorginho, Angolo Cante, these types of guys, Thiago Silva. That's a proper captain material. Whatever, though. Now, he was finally asked any personal goals this season for him. And he said, yes, he has one goal, and that's to stay on the pitch. Fair enough. That should be his number one priority every single game, for a fact. Uh, because Reese James, obviously our most injury-prone player, 100%. And he's so crucial to our to our betterment of, of, of ourselves as a team and to our good performances as a team. Because I'll say it, and I'll keep saying it, Reese James, when he's fit, is the best right-back in the world, in my opinion. So, yeah. Uh, that kind of does it for the whole Reese James situation and Enzo Maresca press conference. Interesting stuff. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about that. Now, moving on to the news quickly. We're going to touch on it really quick. Just a little bit of news today. Uh, Trevor Chalaba, once again, it's noted that he's understood to have been left shocked by his exclusion uh, from the preseason squad. And he's determined to not rush his next move and he's going to weigh up any opportunities for a permanent move. His camp is very disappointed, understandably so. One of our best players last season, and he's being tossed to the side like a piece of trash. Insanely disrespectful. Now, according to Fabrizio Romano, Chelsea are ready to sell Trevor Chalaba for 30 to 35 million pounds. Chelsea believe they have depth in the center back and right back position. Difficult decision not to call him for the U.S. tour, but the plan is clear. Three Premier League clubs plus clubs playing in European football have made initial contact for Trevor Chalaba. Uh moving on to the next thing according to ben jacobs manchester united hold a genuine interest in chalaba and are intent on signing a second center back having already added lenny euro from leo uh if Juan bisaka does go to west ham united chalaba's ability to play at right back would be seen as an asset listen this guy would be unreal for manchester united 100 percent. he's such a talented center back and he would fit into that squad easily he's a player that is a leader he's fantastic on the ball like i keep saying he's fantastic in 1v1 situations his footballing iq is very very good and yeah i mean a cheaper option than matai's delict a better injury record than matai's delict uh he would count as a homegrown player since he's english so he wouldn't take up an international player spot in the starting 11 i mean it just all makes sense for manchester united to complete this signing and for 30 million pounds that's an absolute steal to get a center back the quality of Trevor Chalaba. And fair enough, that would be a fantastic step for him in his career, moving to a massive club like Manchester United, joining up, rejoining with uh, his former teammate Mason Mount from Chelsea Academy. Uh, it'd be stupid by us to sell him to Man United because we'd be strengthening them, but I wouldn't put it past these owners. Uh, but yeah, understandable there. Uh, that's the Trevor Chalaba news, unfortunately. Now... In terms of who's been inverted into midfield into this in the sessions, uh, Bobby Vincent reports that Malagusto and Romeo Lavia are playing alongside each other in possession, according to Bobby Vincent. It seems like Maresca is inverting the right back, but like he said in his press conference, the left back can invert as well. And apparently Ben Chilwell is inverting kind of as a third center back whenever the right back does invert into midfield. So interesting thing to note there. We'll see if that comes to bite us in the butt later on this season. Now... Maresca is set to start with a similar approach to how he played at Leicester City. This is a possession-heavy 4-3-3, where one fullback steps into midfield during the buildup with attacking number eights. Expected uh, for many weeks now, this was the leak, and it's pretty much confirmed now with the open training that many Chelsea fans were given access to. Now, assessing our transfer window so far, we've made six signings. Chelsea Dodgers pose this question, and it's a pretty reasonable question to ask at this point in the season. So he asks, are you happy with the current transfer window? And if not, what do you think we need to add? So the players that we've signed are Mark Yu, Kellyman, Tosin Adarabioyo, Renato Vega, Dewsbury Hall, and Caleb Wiley. Straight off the bat, Kellyman and Caleb Wiley will not play for the club. If they do play for us, it'll be for very few minutes, and that's Kellyman because Wiley is already confirmed to be going to Strasbourg, so I don't even count that as one of our signings. The players that I do see potentially playing for us are definitely Tosin Adarabioyo and Kiernan Dewsbury Hall. Um, they're kind of seen as the more senior signings that have experience at the top level for multiple seasons now, 
and I see them integrating into this first team squad 100%. As for Renato Vega, he does have a couple of years of professional football under his belt. Very versatile player, so obviously suits Enzo Maresca, and it does seem like a player that was signed to kind of fill a, a vacancy in the left back slash center back slash DM role that Enzo Maresca is looking to strengthen. So I do think uh, out of the youngsters that were signed, that, that Vega is going to be the one that's utilized the most by Enzo. But we'll see. And as for Margu, I just don't know. There's been leaks about him going back to Spain on a loan move for a year to Espanol. There's been leaks about him being the main striker to be able to compete with Nicholas Jackson for a starting role. We're going to have to wait and see because this guy's 18 years old. Barely has two goals to his name as a professional footballer. I just don't have any clue what the strategy is with with uh, with some of these signings. But yeah, we definitely still need a top quality striker. We definitely still need a right footed left winger, and I think we need a world class goalkeeper as well. We'll see if Chelsea do end up going for those types of players in the final weeks of the transfer window. Now, as for Cesar Casade, it looks like he could return to Italy and leave Chelsea on loan possibly to Fiorentina. I see this as a good move for him because honestly, I don't see him getting very, very many minutes at all under Enzo Maresca. Yes, he did play for him for a couple of months last season at Leicester City on loan from Chelsea, funnily enough. But we already have Romeo Lavia, Dewsbury Hall, Connor Gallagher, Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo. I'm sure I'm forgetting one other player as well, but it seems like our midfield slots are absolutely taken up and I just don't see Cassidy getting any playing time. As for Andre Santos, there's been leaks that Strasbourg do have a, an option to buy him from Chelsea. But according to Fabrizio Romano, Santos will return to Chelsea after spending the 24-25 season on loan to Strasbourg. There's a clear pan as, as Chelsea senior sources deny any buy option clause included in loan move. Andre will do the U.S. tour under Enzo Maresca, then travel to sign for Strasbourg again. Now that I think about it, I do think it's a positive and understandable move to have Andre Santos join the team in preseason. Because, yes, he is going on loan to Strasbourg, but he's already played there for one year. It is going to be under a new manager. But this guy's basically guaranteed playing time at Strasbourg. If he doesn't get playing time, the Chelsea owners will be very mad at their new manager that they're signing. Liam Rose in your looks like it's going to be that guy, the former whole city manager. And yeah, it's, it's pretty clear that the plan is to integrate this guy into Chelsea squad in the coming years. And they're having him join the preseason to kind of get adapted to the camaraderie of being with the mostly English squad with the uh, English speaking players and kind of adapt to life at Chelsea. So when he does eventually come back into the first team, uh, he doesn't have a hard time adjusting to life as a Chelsea player. So good news there for Andre Santos. Now, as for Victor Osimhen, the same news kind of being repeated again by Fabrizio. Chelsea never wanted to pay Osimhen's release clause. Chelsea never wanted to pay the salary, which is around 11 to 12 million euros net per season. This is why for Chelsea, it's way too expensive, similar to Elise and many other cases, <clears throat> Nico Williams. Chelsea, this has always been a very complicated deal for them. Understandable. I don't think we're ever going to get a top quality striker like Victor Osimhen under these new owners. Now, Mikhailo Mudrik, new haircut for Misha. He has a buzz cut. He's finally focused on his football. He's done with his stupid man bun. I'm glad. I'm glad, man, because we need Misha to lock in this season. If we're not going to sign another left winger and we're going to rely on Raheem Sterling and Mikhailo Mudrik... Uh, we need them to perform because we're absolutely in big trouble if they don't because we can't keep relying on Cole Palmer to be our main source of goals and assists. We need someone else to carry the burden of these stats and kind of pitch in as a contributor to Chelsea's success and not just rely and be Cole Palmer FC like we understandably were last season. So hopefully this means he'll start playing like Joe Cole because now he looks like how Joe Cole used to look for us. So pretty funny there. Now, something crazy, Danny Drinkwater... Former player of Chelsea, obviously massive flop for us, apparently is enjoying his new career after retiring from football. It looks like he's working construction. I don't know if this is truly what he says he is doing. He says he just loves being on the site grafting and that it's his own personal choice to be a construction worker now. But it wouldn't surprise me if he just terribly mismanaged his funds that he earned as a professional footballer in the Premier League, a Premier League winner as well at Leicester City, former England international for a little bit as well. Wouldn't surprise me if this guy threw away all his money down the drain because the stories that came out of this guy getting drunk and getting beat up at nightclubs during his time as a professional footballer uh, speak for themselves. I mean, it seems like this guy just lacked the desire to keep going as a professional footballer. 
and keep being professional after he won the league at Leicester and earned his big money move to Chelsea. It seemed like he did get a little bit complacent. Hopefully that's not the case and it is his choice because um, he. it'd be sad to see that he's working a regular job now after earning millions and millions of pounds from being a professional footballer. But yeah, that's Danny Drinkwater for you. Now, Real Madrid, first club to officially make $1 billion in revenue in football history, 27% more than the previous season. This is because they're the best club best ran club in the world they're the best football club in the world this is what any club in world football should aspire to be they just signed Kylian Mbappe I expect this revenue to skyrocket even more listen Real Madrid will continue winning Champions Leagues for years to come 100% they're they're ruthless in how they do their business but ruthless in how smartly they do their business so very very good for Real Madrid hats off to them best club in the world honestly now Karen Trippier, news about him. He's set to leave Newcastle United this summer, apparently, with interest from the Saudi Pro League. This means Tino Livermento will get more playing time for Newcastle. Um, but yeah, interesting for Karen Trippier there. Kind of the first big player that was signed by Newcastle under their new ownership. And just like that, in a couple of seasons, he's gone. Understandably so. He's, what, 33, 34, 35 years old. Big money moves to Saudi. Don't come around very many often times. So understandable why he's securing the bag and getting his last bit of money from his career that he can. Why not go to Saudi and collect that bag? Fair play to, to Karen Trippier. Now, last piece of news for today. Xavi Simmons. Understand that RB Leipzig are now confident to get the green light for Xavi Simmons. It's a transfer battle with Bayern still going on. But the Leipzig CEO, Minzlaff, is pushing in talks to bring Xavi back. PSG still have no plans to sell Xavi. Open to a loan move and RB Leipzig hope to get it done. I honestly do see him going back to RB Leipzig. He's loved by the fans there. He played unbelievable for them this past season. And he just seems like a proper fit there. So yeah, Xavi Simmons, I think he will join Leipzig over Bayern. Unless Bayern give him a ridiculous salary. But yeah, that does it for today's Chelsea news and football news at the end of the video as well. Let me know what you guys think about Enzo Maresca's press conference remarks, Reese James' remarks, and the whole Trevor Chalaba situation and Enzo Fernandez situation. Uh, yeah. Uh, subscribe to the channel guys hopefully you enjoyed this video almost at 2k subscribers 2k subscribers special coming as soon as we hit that mark and yeah take care guys love all you guys see you guys in the next one and peace